All right, here we go. Nearly two years in the making. Finally, a how to play guide for Mort, the great Mortelix. You guys kept asking for it. I think it's finally time that we deliver on this video and put this to rest behind us because everyone always asks me, when's the Mort guide coming? Here it is, nearly 30 minutes, chock full of things like stats, skills, talking about character builds, exclusive equipments, and matchup knowledge. All the stuff you've come to expect from me in a how to play video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's just jump right into Mortelix's stats. The Great Mortelix, aka Mort, or simply the Great One, is an Earth Knight of the Gemini Zodiac symbol. He shares a stat line with Charles, Illinav, and Summerbreak Charlotte. Taking a look at the stats, he has 957 attack, 634 defense, 6,148 health, 109 speed, 27% starting critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. This is a very strange stat line for a knight to actually have. It is a very high attack score for a knight, although it's very low compared to other 5 stars in Epic 7. Very high speed and critical hit chance as well for a knight, but the defense is kind of average to slightly below average, and the health at 6,148 would be fine for most five stars in the game, but for a knight, it's pretty lacking. And considering that Mort is a health scaling character, this is definitely one of his biggest shortcomings. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic Seven, the Great One is voiced by Ben Lepley. You could also hear him as the voice of Glenn in Epic Seven. They also voice a number of characters from franchises such as Fire Emblem. You can hear them even in Final Fantasy. But from what I've been able to see, characters such as Death Pierce in Seven Deadly Sins are probably something you know them from, as well as Illuso and his stand Man in the Mirror from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. In the Japanese dub of Epic Seven, however, the Great One is voiced by Kosuke Toriyumi, who is a pretty well-known industry veteran, I feel. You could hear them as Junpei Iyori in Persona 3, Kiba Inazuka in Naruto, as well as the spin-off Boruto, Robin Hood in the Fate franchise, and Mista, also again from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. Miserable creature. Mort's S1 is Extermination. It has a 0.7x attack multiplier, as well as an 8% max health multiplier. It has a 40-50% to 50 chance, depending on Malagora, to defense break the target for two turns. This move also ignores effect resistance as long as Mort is enraged, which he gets from his S3, Advent Mortelix, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You may be worth my attention. So let's talk about the pros of Extermination. Two turn defense break is really strong for your basic attack. Normally, you have a one turn defense break for a character, or they are not a damage dealer like Lua, for example, uh, but that character is kind of broken anyway. So that's good. Ignoring effect resistance for a two turn defense break, that's kind of unheard of. That's really, really strong. The problem is, Mort's a damage dealer. And Extermination's damage is, I think, what's really holding this character back from being truly great. You see, Mort came out at the end of 2020. And back then, 0.7x attack and 8% max health was pretty good for the multipliers on this move. In 2023, going into 2024 for Epic 7, this thing is pretty low damage. When you compare it to another character like Alencia, who has Trample in addition to her S1, this thing just simply doesn't do enough damage. It's one of the biggest hurdles that you have to overcome with Mort. You have to give him enough damage to make it feel like he is meaningful in using his extermination skill, as well as the S3 that we'll be talking about a bit later. Again, the damage just really isn't here on this move, but everything else about extermination is very, very good. Moving on to Mort's S2 passive skill, and I'd argue it is his signature and strongest skill, Absolute Dignity. This passive skill makes Mort immune to stun and sleep. It also gives him an innate 30% chance to counter whenever he's attacked, essentially granting him a free counter set. If Mort inflicts a critical hit with his S1 extermination, he has an 80-100% to 100 chance, depending on Malagora, to activate Sacred Blessing. 
Sacred Blessing is a non-attack skill that can only be activated once every two turns. It increases the critical hit resistance of all allies for one turn and increases the speed of Mort for two turns. This is a really, really strong passive skill. It is, in my opinion, what makes Mort viable and pretty decent in this metagame. Immune to Stun and Sleep makes him pretty strong versus a lot of control compositions that are very, very strong right now. So you don't have to worry about things like Sleeps, Stuns from Solitaria, Bombs from Pirate Captain Flan. Yes, you'll still take some damage, but the primary problem for those characters is they stun lock you out of the game. Absolute Dignity doesn't allow that to happen to Mortalix. On top of that, you get this really awesome critical hit resistance buff for your entire team. I will lend you my strength. Shall we test fate? Critical hit resistance has been the cornerstone of some of the game's best characters over its entire lifetime. Critical hit resistance buff is what makes Dien a fairly good character. Critical hit resistance innately is what makes Sanya so good versus aggressive compositions. Critical hit resistance is again what makes Navy Captain Landy so difficult for a lot of teams to actually deal with. So having a very short cooldown on a critical hit resistance for your entire team is very, very strong. And it gets even stronger when you compare it with his exclusive equipment that we'll be talking about in the very next section. And if all that wasn't enough, he still has the speed buff to allow him to take turns in a timely fashion and the innate counter chance, which you can obviously double up on with your own counter set if you so choose, making him really good in a tank down or standard style strategy as a result. Moving on to Mort's S3, it is Advent Mortalix. You acquire two souls upon use and it has a three to four turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is an AoE attack with a 0.7x attack multiplier as well as a 15% max health multiplier. Upon use, Mort becomes enraged. If you don't remember what the rage buff does, it is undispellable and increases the attack and speed of Mort by 10%. On top of that, this move heals Mort for 20% of his max health and inflicts injuries on the entire enemy team, up to 20% of the damage dealt. Brace yourself for a rare spectacle. <laughs> Death has come for you. Despite the cool animation and really sick sounding name, Advent Mortalix, it's just a average AoE S3 at this point in Epic 7. Nothing too game breaking. It has good damage, although it could be a bit better if I'm being honest. It heals, which is nice, but again, nothing too game breaking. It does injure, however, which does give him an identity. It allows him to synergize well with the injury set and also with some of the other characters currently found in Epic 7. On top of that, it gives him a stat boost, most notably that 10% speed, which allows him to actually take advantage of the best part of Advent Mortalix, which is its three turn cooldown. That is really short for an S3 currently in Epic 7. So even though it's not exactly the best, it's pretty spammable. And if you're actually on the injury game plan, it has a pretty solid chance of doing a ton of injury damage to the enemy team and potentially putting away several enemies. Mort Soulburn increases the defense break effect chance to 100% on extermination. This is obviously very good when he is enraged because it's basically a guaranteed two turn defense break on anything that you're fighting, which means if he has any sort of follow up, any other hard hitting damage dealer on his team, they can absolutely put that character away. Even the tankiest characters in this game can fold pretty quickly to a high damage character, assuming that the target is defense broken. So that is very, very good. Miserable creature. When it comes to Mulligora priorities, I think we're trying to max the S2 Absolute Dignity first, as it gives us the highest chance of proccing the Sacred Blessing non-attack skill. And again, I think this is pretty much what allows Mort to be very, very good right now. It's an overloaded passive critical hit resistance. It's just a very, very strong buff. So I think this is the one you want to max out to increase the consistency of the character. After that, we want to at least get Advent Mortalix to the minus one turn cooldown, so that, that way it can be as spammable as we want. And then after that, you can focus on the effect chance on extermination 
last, just so again, we can have that 50% chance to defense break. If you really like Mort, you could consider maxing him out to get the most amount of damage on him. But right now, his biggest drawback is definitely that his damage multipliers need a little bit of love. But otherwise, this character is pretty much the best he's been since his release three years ago. And it's one of the main reasons I decided to do this video on. Him. So if you really like him, then absolutely max Mulligora him to plus 15. Anyways, enough talking. Let's get on with the exclusive equipments. Jumping into Mork's exclusive equipment, it is Frigid Spirit. It grants him 14% max health. As with all of the exclusive equipments that I do here on my How to Play series, I'm assuming in the character build section for my calculations that you have a maxed out Frigid Spirit on the character. There's simply no reason not to go for the 14% when you consider that it's guaranteed through the game's Alchemist Steeple. Taking a look at the options, the first one is on Extermination. It increases the defense break chance of Extermination by 10%. This one, in my opinion, isn't really worth the effort. If you really wanted to guarantee the defense break, you would simply just go for the Soul Burn on the character, so it's not super useful. The second one is on Absolute Dignity. It extends the buff duration of Sacred Blessing's increased critical hit resistance by one turn, effectively making it two turns. That is very, very strong. You basically can have almost full uptime on critical hit resistance on your entire team. When you consider that Mort has Enraged to get the little mini speed buff, as well as speed buff from Absolute Dignity as well, he'll be zooming around the battlefield. And if you decide to just go for extermination constantly, you can just keep up Sacred Blessings buffs. That's super, super useful. It works very well for any tank down or standard player who is looking to protect their team uh, or kind of weather the storm for specific compositions like we'll talk about with one of the builds in the very next section. So this one, in my opinion, is probably the best overall choice. It's the one that I highly recommend. And it's what makes the character, in my opinion, viable right now, at least as the recording of this video in World Arena. The third option is on Advent Mortelix and it simply increases the damage dealt by 10%. These are usually okay if all you care about is getting damage out of the character, but it doesn't really provide the same level of survivability and utility out of the second E, which is why I think it's fine, but it's not the one that I would really recommend. It's been about two years since I started doing the How to Play series here on this channel. And during that time, there have been probably close to, I want to say, 100 requests for one character. It is by far the most requested character from me in the entire time I've been doing these videos. And that is obviously the Great Mortalix, Mort, Mort Daddy, The Great One, Husbando, Dragon Daddy, a million different names that people call him. This is the one that everyone always asks me for. And the thing is, I don't want to make a guide that takes me like 8 to 12 hours to assemble for a character that's pretty terrible. Because let's be honest, Mort for most of his existence has been a meme tier. He's really not that good of a character. But if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're probably a Mort enthusiast. And you probably don't care how good the character actually is. About two months ago, he received a new round of buffs. And that moved him up from pretty terrible, like unusable, to actually kind of decent, dare I say even slightly good. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Mort still has a losing win rate at high level of play. He is incredibly niche still, but in the games that he's good, he feels damn good. He is absolutely amazing thanks to all the changes that he got to his passive versus a lot of slower teams. And if people just don't expect Mort, uh, they don't have uh, anything to deal with an injury-based game plan around him. Or potentially if you're kind of being tricky with like Crown of Glory on it and they're a, a heavy AoE team. That can translate into a win very, very easily. So yeah, Mort's playable right now. And that's why we're making this video because this is the best he has ever been. And considering how many of you want this guide, I figured this is the time to oblige. Just don't go thinking that he's like some super top tier carry now just because I'm putting out this video. He is definitely playable, but still in desperate need of a couple of loose ends to help round out his kit. Smilegate, if you are watching this, what this character really needs at this point is better base stats. So whether that's you add more to his passive to give him more health because he doesn't really exactly have the best health for a knight, or you do something with his S1 because the multiplier is laughable 
Honestly, if it was able to hit two targets instead of just one, uh, we might be cooking with something. But right now, Mort is a niche pick that kind of lends himself as like a support DPS. He can't really be the hard carry for your team. He pairs excellently with other injury-based characters right now, and he's pretty good alongside of other hard carries in the format, such as like Navy Captain Landy or Lionheart Sermia. So if you pair him with that, that's also going to be pretty good. The builds that I'm going to show you in this video are the ones that are basically out there in the community, along with the one that Suri recommended to me and is the one that I'm currently using. Let's start by talking about the standard build. This is by far the most common way to play Mort. However, looking at the raw stats on ladder, it doesn't exactly have a positive win rate. So do take that with a grain of salt. I do things here on how to play for completeness sake. This is not the one I would necessarily recommend, but again, this is by far the most common version of Mort. For primary sets, I am on a speed set with a critical hit chance offset. Do note that Mort has a critical hit chance imprint. If you actually have imprints, then feel free to use any of the alternate two-piece sets I have listed, such as health, immunity, penetration, or unity. If you really want to meme on people with uh, the... Ignore effect resistance on the S1. That is something that you can definitely do. But I recommend critical hit chance set for most people out there if you are new and don't really have a ton of imprints in this character. Destruction is listed here as an alternate four-piece set. And that is because it is like speed, something that just gives raw stats. So it is possible to build this character even on destruction. Although most players have more copies of speed gear than they do destruction. I leave it to you to choose which one you want to use. Taking a look at our desired stats. Attack is 1,755. This is the base attack of Mort with a 990 weapon and the recommended artifact, which is Ancient Dragon's Legacy. That is his own artifact. Defense is 1,350 and health is 21k. Feel free to go higher on either of these if you are able to do so. The best Morts have around 22 to 23k HP. Don't really go lower than 20k. I feel like if you are going beneath... 20k on Mort, you're doing something really, really wrong, and you just don't have the gear, in which case I highly recommend you farm more gear for this character. Don't just shoehorn uh, random gear onto a character just because you want to play them. It's better to build the character properly. That's why you're watching this video, is to learn how to build the character properly. So make sure you try to get those HP totals up. Speed is 210. This is about the average that I see for a speed set Mort, although I have seen as fast as 250. For the people who have like really insane morts, uh, I don't know if you necessarily need that. But I think 210 is a pretty good spot to be at. 210 to 220, somewhere in that range is pretty good. Uh, assuming you can maintain a decent level of bulk as well as damage. Speaking of damage stats, critical chance is 100%. So that, that way we can proc the S2 Sacred Blessing. And then obviously critical damage enables us to you know, just hit harder. So 250% I think is the floor for this character. I've seen as high as 300%. I leave it to you to decide where you want to actually take this character, what you want to give up. Uh, if you don't have exactly the best gear, just kind of pick and choose what you're looking for on the character. Take a look at our right side build here. We are going to be on a crit damage necklace. Although, if you are on destruction, you could choose a critical hit chance necklace. I leave that to you. Kind of your choice if you want to go for that. But since the recommended pieces here are for the speed set all of the math is done for the speed set i only have critical hit damage percentages than that listed here ring is health percentage because he's a health scaler and it obviously gives us bulk boots are health percentage as well i decided to do this in order to make it easier to build for most players if you have really high hp percentage subs on all of your gear feel free to use speed boots i think health percentage boots you will have a significantly easier time building. You're essentially leveraging the 25% extra speed from the speed set and the health percentage main stat on the boots to make this math work. Again, I think it's the easiest way to play the character. Artifact, like I said, is Ancient Dragon's Legacy because it's the one that you probably have access to. If you uh, have pulled Mort, obviously you pulled on his banner, most likely, and therefore probably have Ancient Dragon's Legacy. It's one of the best things you can actually use on the character. It allows you to spam Advent Mortelix a bit faster, get that critical hit damage buff, which does help supplement his low damage. So that is definitely something that you could try. Elbrus Ritual Sword is another very popular option, but usually Elbruses are in high demand, and therefore 
passed off to other characters that are higher priority, such as maybe Navy Captain Landy, for example. And then Mishura Sunglasses, which is Summer Break Charlotte's artifact. That is another one that you could choose as well because it gives you survivability as well as bonus damage. Taking a look at the per piece average here, it is 13% defense, 11% health, 13 speed. And then you'll notice here I have critical hit chance and critical hit damage in the same slot. I leave it to you to decide where you want to overshoot on certain stats in order to make this work. The per piece average on the critical hit chance goes massively down if you actually have imprints for this character. So it's a little bit hard for me to give you specifics on it. But yeah, your last slot should either be heavily investing in critical hit chance or critical hit damage. Moving right into the second build, it is a counter or injury build. More, This is almost identical to the speed build that we just talked about, the standard one. It's just that both of these sets, counter and injury, don't really provide any stats. So we have to kind of tweak the math a little bit to make it work. You're going to be using counter if you really want to lean into his actual counter passive. It gives him like a little over 50% chance to counter, uh, I believe, on it. So if you're keen for that, then it's something you can do. It is not really commonly played, but it is an option that I do see out there. Injury is perhaps the second most common version of this character because it synergizes with the injury built into Advent Mortelix. Uh, it really helps him kind of find his identity. It's good for Guild War defenses, for example, if you pair him with Navy Captain Landy. It's also pretty good if you want to play him with other injury-based characters like a Death Dealer Ray or an Urban Shadow Shoe. So I can understand the appeal of injury. I think injury is a bit better than counter set. Looking at the desired stats, it's nearly identical to the speed build. The only thing that has changed here is speed at 185. It's for the most part the same stats. You could expect the same kind of thresholds as well. Don't go below the 1350 on defense. Try to get a little bit higher, maybe 1500. Health, don't go below 20k. High end is like 23 for the really insane gear. Uh, speed, if you want to bump it up there, 195 or so, 200 is probably the top end for a set like this that doesn't actually give any speed stats. And then critical at damage, 250 is probably the floor. Try to go as high as you can. Highest I've seen is about 300. Take a look at the right side. It's all exactly the same. Critical hit damage necklace, HP percentage ring, HP percentage boots. Artifact is Ancient Dragon's Legacy. Again, you could choose Elbrus or Mature Sunglasses as alternatives. Per piece average should look pretty similar as well. 13% defense, 11% health, 13 speed, and then the excess is either all in critical hit chance or critical hit damage for the piece. And obviously, if you have imprints, again, your critical hit chance average goes a bit lower. And finally, we come to a Lifesteal build on Mort. This is the build that made me want to make this video in the first place. I originally ran into It's Surrey on Ladder. Uh, it's his build for Mort. It is surprisingly good, and almost no one plays it, which is why I really wanted to make this video to highlight that build. The purpose of the Lifesteal Mort is that he is essentially the support damage dealer that is just setting up defense breaks and just keeping anti-crit up the entire time. He is not the primary damage dealer on the team. Again, you need another hard carry such as like a Lionheart Sermia to finish off the enemy team. But he's just there to be resilient and very difficult to kill. And he has a clearly defined niche with the artifact Crown of Glory, which makes him take less damage from AoE attacks. So you take this Mort on Lifesteal with Crown of Glory, pair it with something like Last Rider Crow into Navy Captain Landy, and it becomes an incredibly potent counter pick, a very uh, well thought out niche counter pick, if I must say so, because again, it really just kind of throws the opponent off uh, axis there because they're just not going to do a lot of AoE damage, and you're just going to have this Mort that's very annoying, cycling critical hit resistance, making a bunch of defense breaks on the enemy team, slowly injuring them out, and if their team is primarily on AoE damage, there's not really a whole heck of a lot they can do to punch through your team, assuming you actually have a tank, some kind of support, and again, a hard carry to support more. So that's kind of the logic for why this build works. Looking at the primary sets, we're obviously on lifesteal and then critical hit chance again is the offset because mort has a critical hit chance imprint and not everyone has that so we need this in order to make the math actually work so if you're struggling at critical hit chance obviously this is still the set alternate two pieces if you have imprints still the same obviously health immunity penetration and unity looking at the desired stats 1599 attack is the big change here and it's not really that much of a change it is essentially the uh, attack that mort will have with an i90 weapon 
And the new recommended artifact, which is Crown of Glory, which we already talked about in the introduction of this section. Defense, health, speed, critical hit chance. These are all the same as the injury and counter builds. The critical hit damage, though, is at 270%. And that is because since you're on lifesteal, you need to make sure that you deal damage. If you're not going to be able to deal a decent chunk of damage, then it's not really worth it to play lifesteal set. So that's why I've kind of denoted this by having a higher floor for the critical hit damage. I play around 270, but uh, Surrey I know plays closer to like 300 or like 305, for example. If you're on Lifesteal set without a ton of damage, then Advent Mortelix will still kind of keep you topped off, heal you up pretty well, but you really need to hit hard. I feel like in order to make use of the Lifesteal set, which is again why we have the higher critical hit damage here. Looking at the right side, critical hit damage necklace. Ring is health percentage. Boots are obviously still also health percentage, but you could choose speed if you have very, very high HP subs on your gear, as we've already talked about in previous sections. Artifact is Crown of Glory, and that is because of all the reasons, again, we said at the start of this section. However, Ancient Dragon's Legacy with its critical hit damage buff might be a better choice for a lot of players. I just really like the Crown of Glory synergy because I like to draft a lot of Last Rider Crow in the current format, and so having... The barriers and the AoE damage mitigation from him, along with the Crown of Glory from Mort together, gives me a pretty awesome, you know, way to kind of sandwich a Navy Captain Landy in my drafts. I take Crow early, I take Mort late, and they don't really know he's on Crown of Glory, and it's kind of like a nice surprise. Surrey got me with it. I've had success getting a lot of other players with it, which is why I am on it. But I think uh, once the cat's out of the bag on this, Ancient Dragon's Legacy might be a bit better. Obviously, Elbrus and Mature Slang Glasses are still very good options for this character. Looking at our per-piece average, it is 13% defense, 9% health, 13 speed, and then the rest is on critical hit chance or critical hit damage. Obviously, it's going to need to be really high on the critical hit chance if you don't have imprints. Otherwise, you're going to be able to just invest it all, most likely, into critical hit damage. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge. As we just said in the previous section, we're trying to build teams around Mort. He's kind of like the uh, the niche pocket pick, and we have to have teammates that already have a game plan that supports that niche that we're picking him for. So, for example, with the lifesteal build on Crown of Glory, a teammate like Last Rider Crow is obviously going to be really good because the game plan is to mitigate AoE damage. If you're looking to really lean into the critical hit resistance from Sacred Blessing, you could choose teammates like, say, Deanne or even Navy Captain Landy. And if you're trying to lean into the injury plan from Advent Mortelix, then you're obviously going to want to take strong injury characters such as Urban Shadow Shu or Sharoon. And if you're trying to lean into a team that just can't really be shut down by debuffs, like how Mort can't be stunned or slept, consider a character like Designer Lilibet, as, you know, a lot of these debuff-based teams, they're going to have a really hard time taking down both of those characters. Mort's bad matchups are fairly straightforward. He is an HP Skeller, so he's pretty terrible against injury-based characters such as Death Dealer Ray or Urban Shadow Shu. He is primarily a single target DPS. Yes, Advent Mortalix is an AoE move, but it doesn't really have the greatest multipliers, meaning that he's not super good against hard to access DPS, such as like say Spectre Tenebria or Landy on Guiding Light. And since he is a green DPS, obviously he's super susceptible to red DPS, like say a Roy Mustang, for example. There's not really much more can do there. And then there are also other characters like Ilanav, even though she's not heavily played, that's an injury-based character and a red character, so obviously Mort is absolutely terrible there. Mort really excels in matchups where it is kind of a standard versus standard showdown, especially if it has knights that usually have a lot of effect resistance that you can't defense break. A character like Unbound Knight Arwell being able to stick a defense break on her due to the ignore effect resistance on the S1 is pretty potent, can allow you to essentially take down their tank and pull ahead in that game even a character like Icarina for example you have the natural color advantage over and if you can defense break her with your ignore effect resistance it not only makes her an easy target but drastically reduces that character's damage as well the other things that you can primarily expect to play more into are a lot of blue based characters especially health scaling bruisers think of things like Lethe or Shu 
Mort's also got a pretty decent matchup against Apocalypse Robbie, although a lot of things nowadays feel like they do. But again, he's an injury-based character. He can basically guarantee that he has her defense broken for most of the game. And the critical hit resistance does surprisingly swing the matchup in your favor a lot of the time. Lastly, I do want to highlight Navy Captain Landy because if you defense break her, she is pretty vulnerable. And like we talked about in the lifesteal section, having a character on your team like Last Rider Crow, along with like Crown of Glory on Mort, does really hamper that character's effectiveness. Uh, you're not going to be taking too much damage from any of her salvos. And assuming you're pretty healthy going into her Mobilize the Warship turn, it's not going to really kill you. It'll do a lot of damage, sure, but Mort can't be stunned. You might get a counter. I might be able to pick her off. So I think it's favorable for the most part. Every time I've personally played the matchup, it's been pretty good for me. So that's why I decided to include it here. And that is going to do it for how to play Mortelix. I want to give a big thank you to Suri for all of his help in making this video. I will link his Twitch down in this video's description. If I forgot anything, please let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more how to play guides in the same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. If you really enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. It does help me out a ton. But more important than helping me, help out a friend by sharing this video with them if you think it's something that they'd enjoy. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye now.